Woohoo! 1,000 subscribers! Thank you very much for the cake and the card, Fatima, Sahana, Olivia, Mary Lou, Ryan, Mediha, and Erin. It's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 14, lesson number three. Before we move on to the next two proofs, I want to throw in this lesson with negation statements. So, what's negation statements all about, and why do we need them? Well, some statements are difficult to prove in the form that they are written, especially when it comes to the next two proofs. The lesson after this, proof by contradiction, and the one after that, proof by contrapositive. So, what we use instead is the negation of the statement. Can anybody tell me what the negation means, Michaela? Perfect! It means the opposite. It is the logical opposite of the statement. In other words, the negation of statement P is the statement that is true if P is false, and it's the one that is false if P is true. So let's say we take these one, two, three, four statements. Let's think about what the negation statement would be. Well, the first statement says that triangle ABC is equilateral. So the opposite of that would be if ABC was not equilateral. If we had the statement that A is even, for all A belong to a set of natural numbers, so A is even, well, the opposite of that would be that A is not even. And if it's not even, you could say it's odd. Perfect. So A is odd would be the negation of that statement. If x add 4 equals 7, so we know x add 4 is the exact same as 7, and the opposite of that would be if it wasn't the exact same. In other words, if it is not equal. So the negation statement will be x add 4 is not equal to 7. So it's an equal sign with the line through it. And finally, if we have that x, y is less than x add y, well, the opposite of that would be that if x, y is not less than x plus y. And if it's not less than, it's going to be bigger than. Perfect. So you would have x, y is bigger than x plus y. However, if you think about this one, you're perfectly right. You could have it bigger than x plus y, but what else could you have? Brilliant. You could have it bigger than x plus y or equal to as well. So as long as it's not less than, then it would be bigger than or equal to. Woo! When it comes to these statements, you really have to think about them and you have to consider what you need to demonstrate to prove that the statement is false. For example, if I told you, listening on YouTube right this second, if I told you that I am rich and famous, think about how you could disprove that. Well, you could disprove it by proving that either I'm not rich or you could disprove it by saying I'm not famous. So it'll be one or the other. Whichever one would disprove me saying that I'm rich and famous. So the first note is the negation of A and B, for example, rich and famous, would be that it's not A or not B. So you would just dis have to disprove one of them to disprove that whole statement. For example, let's take these three statements. The first one says it is both cold and wet today. Think about how you could disprove that. I'm saying it's cold and it's wet. Well, you could disprove that by just disproving one of these parts. So you could say that it is not cold or it is not wet. Just one of them would disprove that whole statement. If I said that everybody studies both maths and English, well, first of all, we're saying everybody, every single person. Think about how you could disprove that. Well, the opposite of really every single person, you can disprove that by just getting one person that doesn't. So the negation of everybody would be someone. And I'm saying here that they study both maths and English, everybody studies maths and English, you could disprove that by just finding one person that doesn't study maths or doesn't study English. Again, the negation of A and B is not A or not B. So maths and English would be not maths or not English. If I'm saying that X is a positive multiple of three, well, I'm saying two things here. I'm saying that X is positive and I'm saying it's a multiple of three. So to disprove that, I would say that x is not positive 
or it is not a multiple of three. And if you show that it's not positive or it's not a multiple of three, again, that would disprove that statement. Woo! Let's consider another scenario. Let's say that I told you that I'm either blonde or a brunette. So I'm blonde or a brunette. Well, to disprove that, you would have to show that, first of all, I'm not blonde. And you would have to show that I'm not a brunette. I would have to be not blonde and not a brunette in order to disprove that. Because this statement is saying I'm going to be one of them. And the negation of that to disprove it would be that, well, I'm not either of them. So, note two, the negation of A or B is not A and not B. Once again, consider these statements. So, statement one, you are either rich or happy. So, think about this. If you were rich or if you were happy, how would you disprove that? Well, to disprove that, you would not be rich and you would not be happy. So, you're not rich and you're not happy. The next one, everybody studies French or German. Once again, we've got this everybody. Think about how you would disprove that. Well, how could you disprove that it's everybody? Well, in order to disprove everybody, you just have to find one person. So you can say there is someone. And what would you say about that someone? Well, I'm saying here they study French or German. So one or the other. And to disprove that, well, it means they're not going to study French and they're not going to study German. So you can say someone, blah, 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 blah. so you can say someone studied neither French nor German. And finally, if X is bigger than 10 or X is less than zero, well, I'm saying that it's going to be one of them. It's going to either be bigger than 10 or it's going to be less than zero. So to disprove that, again, I've got this something or something and the negation of that is not A and not B. So I'd have to say it's not bigger than 10 and it's also not less than zero. So if you think about those numbers, it can't be bigger than 10 and it can't be less than zero, which means it would have to lie in that range between zero and 10. So you would say that x would be bigger than or equal to zero, but also less than or equal to 10. And that way you can say that it's definitely not bigger than 10 and it's definitely not less than zero. And finally, for this statement here, let's say if I said to Ben that if he doesn't take an umbrella, then he will get wet. How could he disprove that? Well, the first part could remain true. Ben could not take an umbrella, but he can disprove it by then not getting wet. So, for the last part, note three, the negation of an implication requires proving that the conclusion does not follow from the premise. In other words, even though you keep the first part the same, so he doesn't take an umbrella, he doesn't take an umbrella, then B is not. So I'm saying if he doesn't take an umbrella, then he will get wet. He's going to disprove it by not taking an umbrella, but then not getting wet. So it's the last part that would change. If you think about these statements here, statement one, if you don't set an alarm, then you will be late for school. To disprove that, you could keep the first part the same, don't set an alarm, but it's the next bit that would change. So disprove it by saying you don't set your alarm, but you're not late to school. With the next one, if there is smoke, there must be a fire. Well, to disprove that, you could say that, okay, there is smoke, the first part stays the same, but the next bit, well, there is no fire. And for the last one, if n is even, then n over 2 is a whole number. You could disprove that. The negation statement of that would be n is even, but n over 2 is not a whole number. So again, the first part, if n is even, will stay just as it is. But it's the next part that would change. That would be the opposite. That would be the negation statement. So, a summary for all of these negation statements. First of all, the negation of a and b is not A or not B. Again, if I said I'm rich and famous, you can disprove that by proving that I'm either not rich or not famous. With the next one, if it's A or B, so if I claim that I was either blonde or a brunette, well, the negation of that, the opposite of that, would be that I'm both not blonde and not a brunette. So you'd have to say it's not A and not B. 
with the next one, if A then B, well, the negation of that would be if A then not B. So again, if I said to Ben, if you don't take an umbrella, then you will get wet. Well, Ben doesn't take an umbrella, but then he doesn't get wet. So the first part's the same and the next bit's not. The negation of true for all, if you think about that when it was everybody studies maths or English, well, the negation would be that it would just be false for at least one person. It'd be false for somebody. And the negation of true for some. So if some people did that, well, the opposite would be that, well, nobody did that. It would be false for all. Try these questions in the Unit 3 booklet, page 82. Check your answers as you go and keep going back to these questions. Just check that it's okay in your head and you're able to come up with the negation statements for whatever statement you are given. Woo! Have fun. I'm away to have some cake. Yeah.